This little machine nearly beat my full-size desktop in a CPU benchmark and it's not even trying. It might just be the ultimate home lab device. In this video, I'm going to show you how I set it up as a Proxmox server, run some benchmarks and create a Kubernetes cluster with Talos. And by the end, I'll tell you whether it's worth adding to your home lab. Minis Forum sent me this MSA2 for free to review, but they're not sponsoring this video and they have no influence in my opinion about it. So let's get into it. Here's the Minis Forum MSA2 fresh out of the box. As you can see, it's compact, about the size of two paperback novels, but very space efficient compared to what it packs inside. Under the hood, it's powered by an AMD Ryzen 9 9955HX, which is a mobile class chip sporting 16 cores and 32 threads, and it boosts up to 5.4 gigahertz. There's also a Zen 4 option with the Ryzen 7 7945HX, but mine has the newer Zen 5 chip for even more efficiency. For memory, it supports up to 96 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM, and the storage options include three PCIe 4.0 M2 slots, great for building a fast, high-capacity home lab system. Minisform sent me a standard version with only 32 gigabytes of RAM, but I plan to upgrade it to 96 gigabytes later. The MSA2 includes a half-height physical PCIe times 16 slot, electrically PCIe 4.0 times 8 that can be split into two times four lanes, which means that you can add extra NICs, NVMe expansion, or even a low profile GPU down the road. In terms of networking, this unit includes dual 10 Gbps SFP plus ports and dual 2.5 Gbps RJ45 ethernet ports. That's very rare in this size, and it's super useful for virtualization, Ceph storage, or workloads that need some serious throughput. On the outside, you'll find basic I.O., USB-A, USB-C, a headphone jack, power button, all simple and practical. In short, a small form factor powerhouse with an AMD CPU, lots of RAM and storage potential, and enterprise-grade networking. Not bad for a bare-bones starting point for your home lab. As you may know, I am a big fan of bare metal Kubernetes home labs, so I actually don't have any virtualization servers in my current home lab setup. I only run Kubernetes clusters, no VMs, and they all run on thin clients that I clustered up through Talos. So this device looks like a perfect candidate for a Proxmox server, so I can also start running VMs as well. And that's what we're gonna be doing in this video. I was really glad when Minis Forum reached out to me because I had actually been looking into this form factor for a while. I've been looking to upgrade my home lab and considered buying a rack and getting a rack mounted server. For example, the 45 Drives Home Lab HL15 was something I considered. Hey, 45 Drives, if you're watching this, you should definitely send me one. However, I didn't go down that route because I live in a small one floor apartment and I'm very sensitive to noise. I was almost about to buy a rack and one of these 45 Home Lab servers when I came across a review that showed me the noise level of these types of servers. It sounded like an airplane, and since my apartment also tends to get really hot in the summer, I knew this was not going to be an option. Having a constant hum in the background will simply drive me insane, and that is not worth it. So that's when I started investigating this mini PC form factor. I heard that these have much more lower noise levels, so let's find out if that's true. The first step is to get this baby up and running. But before I get into installing Proxmox, only 21% of you are subscribed. You can support my work completely for free. Just click the subscribe button. Be a legend and do it now because I have to buy food. Thank you. Now let's get into installing Proxmox. I installed a bootable USB using DD, which I did on Arch Linux, by the way. And the Minis Forum came with Windows 11 pre-installed as the default boot option. So I had to change the boot order in the BIOS. I also had to disable secure boot and then my Proxmox installer booted right up. After installing and configuring Proxmox with a static IP address in the correct VLAN of my home network, I could log into the Proxmox web interface. Before doing anything else, I wanted to run a quick benchmark on the Minis Forum to see what it's capable of. So I've just opened the Proxmox interface in my browser here and it all worked perfectly. And now I'm going to be using Geekbench to do a benchmark. So in order to do that, first we're gonna open up a shell to the, to the machine here. And it's actually super easy, but I have the commands over here. So I'm going to be using wget to download the Geekbench archive. So let's just make the Geekbench and 
wgetthat. So that will take a few seconds to download. And when that's done, we're going to unzip it. And then we are going to run the Geekbench 6 benchmark. So we have downloaded it. Now I can just unzip it. And when that's done, we will just cd into that directory and run the Geekbench 6 script over here. And here we go. So it's now running the benchmark and it will soon show up in my benchmark overview on the Geekbench website. So now our benchmark is done. So I can just close the terminal and for good measure, I'll just exit the shell first and then it's closed. So let's check out the benchmark results. And I'm comparing this against my, my main desktop machine, which I built last year. And this one contains an AMD Ryzen 9 9950X, 32 cores, and um, also an NVIDIA 4090, but we're not testing the, the GPU here at all. But I, I, I built this one last year, and this is when the, these A Ryzen 9 chips just came out. So it was the best one that I could get one year ago. Um, I'm running Arch Linux, by the way, and I have not done any particular like optimization or tuning of the CPU. I basically just installed Arch and it is working blazingly fast, so I, I haven't bothered to, to optimize it too much yet. Uh, so no overclocking, no tuning or anything like that, just a base install of, of Arch Linux, basically. And that, that is the benchmark that we're um, comparing it against. Also, I ran the benchmark on the Arch Linux machine while I had a few containers running, a browser open, etc. So it's not... Okay, I'm ashamed to admit, but it's not a completely clean benchmark, but it will serve the purpose here. And the results are actually really impressive. So when we compare the Minisform with Mimir, that is the, the nickname I gave my, my workstation, is it is only 8%, 7.9% uh, slow, slower than the my, my, my top-of-the-line consumer-grade desktop PC that I built last year. 8%. I mean, that's freaking insane. <laughs> and especially if you compare the price, like this, this thing cost me several thousand euros. And actually the, the, the CPU alone is more expensive than a, an MSA2, as far as I know. So at least at the time when I bought it. So this is actually really impressive. So that's the single core score. On the multi-core score, it's even, it's, it's only 4% slower. Than my, than my main workstation. I mean, it's it, it's absolutely crazy. So yeah, it is it done it did really well. You can see here in the single core performance, uh, in terms of file compression, 86%, 88%, 88%. So it is all up in the 80%. Asset compression is 97%. So it is all up there. There are like no real lows here that I can I can spot. And even the multi-core performance in terms of file compression was even more efficient, surprisingly. So yes, it definitely has, it packs a lot of power and it also has 32 cores, right? It, ha it has 62, 62 cores, but 32 threads. So I think this is a really, really good uh, machine for virtualization in a home lab setting, especially if you consider the, the form factor. And yes, it's not a server-grade uh, CPU like a Xeon or something like that, but it will serve its purpose for sure. So now that we have the benchmarking out of the way, let's actually do something with our Proxmox server. And what I'm going to be doing is, of course, create a Kubernetes cluster using Talos Linux. So I've been using Talos for almost two years now, and I absolutely love it. And I've done it the, the normal way with generating the config files, if you're familiar with that. But last winter, I switched to Sidero Omni, which is like the SaaS version of, of Talos Linux. And they have a home lab license, which I highly recommend you check out. It's like 10 bucks a month or something, but it makes this stuff super easy. So what I'm going to be doing is I, I'm going to generate an installation media. So what you do is you just pick your Talos version and you can add a label to it. So for example, Proxmox, and then you can add initial kernel uh, arguments and, for example, extensions. So if I want to have my Synology iSCSI uh, setup working properly, I need to install iSCSI tools, for example. So you generate your, your installation media and you press download. And this is then going to generate a specific custom ISO for you that is 
uh, already configured to connect to your Omni instance. So now my ISO is downloaded and I just go into Proxmox and I go to my storage and then I hit upload and then I uploaded the ISO that I generated. And that is all I need to do. So now we're ready to just create a new virtual machine and I'm just going to name this Talos Proxmox 01. Uh, let's just call it Talos 01. And for the OS, I am then going to pick out the ISO that I generated and uploaded. And next we will give it um, some resources, of course. So let's see, uh, disks is fine. So let's give it four cores and let's give it 8192, so eight gigabytes of RAM. That work is just default and confirm. So this is now going to create start creating that virtual machine and when it's created i am going to start it start and when that's done then we should uh, it, sh it should show up in our omni dashboard pretty quickly so in omni i just go to my machines and as you see i already have several machines running this is my actual home lab which i have clustered in several um several clusters so i'm running three single node clusters at the moment. And here you go, our new machine has now already been um, added to my Omni instance. And what I can do now is I can uh, click this machine and now I see the, I can see what's going on. I can check out the logs and then I can apply patches to it and I can create a new cluster because this is basically a pool of machines that exists in my, in my, in my home lab, in my, in my, um, data center you could say and I can just pick and choose these machines and combine them I can delete them and uh, recombine them into new clusters so let's just create a new cluster create a cluster and I'm going to um, call this one Talos Proxmox and let me see let's not do encryption let's just keep it simple for now and I'm just going to pick this machine and this is going to be the control plane. So all I had to do was just to pick out the control plane here. And now I'll just create cluster. Uh, it will be a single node cluster for now. And then I can add another node. So now this is configuring. And let's just create a new VM so that we can add a multi-node cluster as well. So let's see. Let's call this one Talos02. Next, we're going to give this the same ISO. That's the beauty of it. So you just upload the same IS, use the same ISOs, and then it's, it gets added to your machine pool in Omni. 81.92. And let's just, everything default. So now our cluster is uh, currently installing. So let's check out if we can see some logs here. Here's the machine, console logs. Here we go. We can see it's actually installing now. And this is so beautiful because you can install a, you create an image. It already has the latest version and then it pulls in the latest, um, everything that it needs, all of the drivers, etc. And uh, after basically a few minutes, then the whole the cluster should be up and running. So as we see now, the cluster is already completely ready. My control plane is running and I can... I can just check out the monitoring. I can see what's going on. I can check out the, the console logs, everything. And, and this is why I love Omni so much. It's making home, my home labbing life so much easier. And it's definitely worth the money for me. And then what I can do now is I created the new VM here in Pro Proxmox. So I have two VMs now, Talos 1 and Talos 2. And when we check out the machines, we see that uh, a new machine has actually been added already. So what I can do now is I can go to my cluster and then I go to my Talos Proxmox cluster. And this, this is what I love so much about, about this whole setup. So instead of having to generate all of the manifests and to go through the IP addresses, etc., it's actually quite a lot of work if you do it a lot like I, like I do because I experiment a lot. But here in this Talos Proxmox cluster, all I need to do is just click cluster scaling and then I'll, I see I have one available machine, which is this new VM that I just created. And all I do is I just click W0 because I want to add a worker node, update, and boom, this machine is now going is now added to my cluster and it's now automatically configuring it as a worker node. I mean, oh, this is just so cool. 
and I absolutely love this complete setup. So this is what I'm going to be using my Proxmox server for mainly uh, to be, I can very easily create like testing clusters or create separate environments that I'm, that I like to do for my work and for my experimentation. So that's, that's a great use case, but also I can just create, you know, Linux VMs when I want to test out a few distros or something like that. Yeah, so far this Minis forum is performing exceptionally well. And because of the form factor, I absolutely love it uh, that I can use it for this use case. I don't own proper sound testing equipment, so I'll lean on other reviews online here. Uh, Servthehome.com tested the Minis form at 39 dBA in idle, and under load it was in the 50 dBA range. As I said, I am very sensitive to noise, and I don't like to have machines humming in the background. It's literally the only thing that I'll hear when that happens. So my subjective verdict is that it's actually a bit noisy. I would not like to have this on my desk as a daily driver, for example, because you can definitely hear it in idle, especially if you're a bit sensitive to that stuff uh, like me. However, for my use case, I have it in a separate closet with a closed door. And in that situation, I cannot hear it at all, even when it's under load or while I was doing the benchmark. Finally, let's talk about power consumption. It idles at 25 watts and can go up quite a bit from there. Under load, it will sit at 135, 145 watts easily, which will go up from there if you add cards and adjust power limits. So that's definitely something to consider too. I love this thing. It's powerful, compact, and I'll probably buy more of these as my home lab grows. The form factor is perfect, especially if, like me, you live in a smaller apartment and you don't have a basement or something like that, and you can't stand noisy machines humming away in the background. This gives you a ton of freedom without taking over your space or your sanity. And with 16 cores, enterprise networking, and real expansion options, you're not limited of what you can run. I've seen people 3D print rack mounts for these, so maybe it's finally time for me to build a proper rack. Just not with the big servers that sound like jet engines, but just with a few more of these instead. In short, I highly recommend this device and I'm definitely going to get more of these. Make sure you subscribe to not miss out on any content. And if you want to see my Kubernetes home lab, check out this video. See you in the next one.